This is Martin Giles of the Guildford Dragon News and this morning I'm with Angela Richardson, the Conservative candidate for the forthcoming general election on December the 12th and I'm, we're in Cranley uh, where uh, Angela lives close by in Newhurst. Angela, thank you for giving your time today for the uh, interview with the Guildford Dragon. Thank you for coming out and for coming into Cranley, into this part of the constituency, um, where I'm a local councillor as well. And we're about to knock on doors shortly, and I've been in the Cranley market this morning talking to people. OK, so tell us a bit about your background. You're new as a candidate. Tell us something about yourself and why you'd make a good MP for Guildford. OK, well, I arrived here from New Zealand um, over 20 years ago. I've got a background in investment banking operations, um, so I've got business um, exposure. Um, I've been a stay-at-home mum for quite some number of years. I've got um, a child who's on the autism spectrum, so I've had to work quite hard to access a lot of help and um, services and the right education setting for him. So I've got experience. Um, that other families might have in terms of accessing services but I think also my work as a local councillor has helped me understand local government a bit more and some of the things that um, Parliament needs to do to help local communities uh, work better um, and I've had governance experience as well in school so there's lots of things that I can bring to the table um, but I think um, being new being a fresh voice in politics and listening to people which I've been doing on the doorsteps for many many years now um, I think that's vital to bring to the role too. Okay, now uh, moving on to Brexit, obviously a big issue in this uh, election. Anne Milton has made uh, Guildford a safe seat uh, for the Conservatives, uh, and you used to work for Anne Milton. But Boris Johnson told her, so be it, if Brexit issues required its loss for the Conservatives. Um, despite the Brexit candidate standing down, uh, Anne Milton will split your vote, while the Remainer Tories are perhaps unlikely to vote for you. You're in trouble, aren't you? I don't think so at all. I think the conversation that Anne was having um, was back around the time that they were trying to renegotiate the deal and she was very concerned about no deal. Uh, no deal need to be kept on the table so that Boris Johnson could get this new deal. And we're moving forward now. This isn't about the conversations that we've had in the past. This is about moving forward, getting the deal through and actually getting the investment. As I've been talking to people on the doorstep, what I'm finding is that people are fed up with Brexit. They want to get it done. And over the, over the last year, and especially in the difficult May elections, um, I was talking to a lot of Remain voters who are Democrats, and I think it's really important to emphasize that. This, was, this isn't a 2016 rerun at all. You know, this isn't a constituency that's 56% Remain, 44% Leave. You need to account for the fact that many of those Remain voters would like to see the result of the referendum honored. So, you know, you know it's much more complicated than I think you're painting the picture. Uh, OK, but if we get the deal done under the Conservatives, what impact do you think that will have on Guildford and on and here in Cranley? Well, I think what we've seen is that um, there were a lot of predictions over the last three years um, uh, uh, that Brexit would be dreadful, that we'd see loads of terrible things happen. Now, none of those things have come to pass. And what I hope to see is that um, we can start to get um, some more certainty for businesses. Um, companies will know um, how what they're going to do, how they can hire staff. People who want to move house will be able to um, see those house exchanges happening more quickly. So I actually think we're going to see a bit of a, um, there may be a short term economic downturn. I, I think a lot of people who voted leave knew that that may, may be a possibility. But in the long term, I think this will be a brighter future for our country, and I'm really excited about the opportunities. Now, free movement is one of the things that will end uh, under if we uh, leave the EU. Um, and the other candidates in uh, Guildford, standing in Guildford, are saying that immigration is a good thing, and in fact it would rise under their uh, governance. Um, what do you think? You, your party's committed to bringing immigration down, but you yourself are an immigrant. What, do, what is your view on that? Yeah, so I've, um, being an immigrant, I came on a working visa. Um, I got a, a married visa, having married an Englishman. I understand a little bit about the processes of applying and going through immigration. What I'm delighted to see is that there will be a parity across the whole world so that we can bring the best and the brightest skills and talents from everywhere in the world. Um, we do want to see uh, we don't know but what you want the numbers to come down uh, so we haven't seen the manifesto come out yet and seen what the absolute um, commitments are there but at the moment I'm not sure we're going to be putting a specific number on as we've put numbers on in the past um, but I think the idea is that immigration will come 
down, but we need to see a massive investment into the young people of this country, into apprenticeships and into those skills, those vital skills that we've often brought in from abroad. That's what we need to be looking at now. But, but you, are, you are intending for the numbers to come down overall? I think the numbers will come down overall, but as an immigrant myself, um, I think immigration is a great thing for this country. Um, you know, all countries are built, successful countries are built on immigrants. Okay, was the hostile environment for illegal immigrants, as they're sometimes described, a mistake? The Windrush scandal was a terrible stain on the last government, wasn't it? Do you know what? I'm absolutely in agreement with that. I think you need to be able to look critically at your own government, the things that they've done in the past. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing that I would point to and, and say that we can all hold our hands up and say that could, should have been handled much better. Um, the hostile environment and the go-home vans was, was not a good thing to do. So I would like to see us um, just, just uh, being a little bit more careful uh, in future as to how we deal with immigration. And uh, moving on to transport now, railways, um, your party has announced it wants to reverse the beaching cuts. Uh, the only cut in the Guildford constituency was the Guildford to Horsham line that passed through here in Cranley. Uh, do you think it should be reopened? So it's interesting, as soon as that was announced I went on and I had a look at the map of the country and uh, there was nothing in this area. And so um, as a councillor I have had a look at the, the Downs link and uh, Surrey County Council did a feasibility study on it a long time ago. and. I don't think it looks feasible. It's also a green corridor, so the environmentalists um, would be up in arms if we suddenly put the uh, railway line back in there because it's a corridor for wildlife, for animals, but it's also used for cyclists and for pedestrians and for people who are not using cars. Um, so I don't think that that's a feasible thing for this But the A281 is an extremely busy road, getting busy all the time, and it's not easy to develop it and make it wider, is it? Uh, no, it's not easier to make it wider but I went along to the Dunsfold exhibition with their master plan uh, and that's one of the things that's going to impact on the A281 and they've got uh, four different um, intersections that they are hoping to manage and change with their project and the section 106 money that's coming from that to help ease traffic on the A281. They believe that traffic will be no greater than it is now in 10-15 years time when this is completed but that is one of the key things that I'm looking at is infrastructure projects, innovation coming into road infrastructure to help keep traffic moving because congestion's a big issue and air pollution's a big issue for constituents. That's rather hopeful, isn't it? More homes, don't they need more cars and therefore more traffic? Yes, but they're also bringing online um, bus routes. They want to get people into buses. We want more electric buses. Um, and we, they're creating jobs on site at Dunsfold so that people who live in the homes can walk to work. OK, now you've brought up Dunsfold, and let's look at planning uh, overall in, in the constituency. Many s might say that the planning policies brought in by your party are proving disastrous for Guildford. The irresistible pressure to build homes at all costs have led to a local plan to build 10, between 10 and 14,000 houses, many of them on the green belt, and that represents at least a 20% increase in our current uh, housing stock. Um, it's a massive redevelopment, and we've got also a massive redevelopment of Guildford Railway Station. Um, hasn't your party failed Guildford when it comes to planning? Do you know what? Um, the Conservative um, led administration at the Borough Council um, took a very brave um, political decision to get the local plan through. A very unpopular decision. Yes, but which administration was going to do it? I think had they held it off for the next term um, in order to get the votes through, they would have been doing the people of Guildford uh, a disservice. Local plans are there to stop the central government from just putting housing in where it wants to. Local plans are for locally elected councillors uh, with consultation in the community to get planning permissions in the right place. We need the housing um, there's the five big sites going in uh, you know I know that it's been difficult I know it's controversial we need to have a conversation around um, the green belt because if you stand in the middle of the green belt sometimes and look around it doesn't look green 
Some parts of it. Well, well last and, night... I... And, and if you um, don't take little areas out of the green belt and put other areas in, you end up coming into countryside outside of the green belt where we're standing here in Cranley and we've seen huge numbers of houses coming in because there's no protection. Um, so we need to have a grown-up conversation around that. Okay, uh, but which of the uh, strategic green belt sites in the borough don't look green? Well, um, uh, uh, Wisley Airfield. Well, it's surrounded by agricultural land. Yes, I know it is, but I think that's what we need to do. We need to actually go in and all be standing around and having a look at the green belt because it's a strategic zone to stop. And that's just one of them. Yes, that's just to stop the spread of housing um, inappropriately. But the thing is, you end up having the spread happening in other places where it shouldn't on pristine green fields. Well, one of the areas, the one you said last night at the Hustings at yes, the University, Farm. Blackwell Farm, that's bordered by uh, an area of outstanding natural beauty. And yet you, you said you would accept, uh, even before you've seen the planning application, you would accept the uh, uh, development of that site. Yes, because it's in the local plan. And the local plan, as we know, is going through a um, high court process. It's being looked at at the moment. Hopefully we'll see the results come out. I don't know whether it will be found sound or not, but you know it's incredibly difficult to come up with these different sites um, to put housing in. And you mentioned the, uh, the railway station station I think everyone would agree it's not the most beautiful development at all um, and it, it went straight up to the Secretary of State and and the well, second the, via the planning inspector yes and but it, the local councillors uh, refused it unanimously yes and that was the right thing to do but it's also the right thing to do to put housing where you've got infrastructure and facilities so there's got to be compromises I would like to have seen a much more beautiful design okay and just coming right here to Cranley, you're a parish councillor yes. and, and I understand that there's a, an application for a new um, village hospital? So the application is actually for a care home and in the care home there will be 80 beds altogether, 60 of them um, will be privately funded, 20 of them will be free at the point of need. Um, that's going through next Wednesday night I believe the Joint Planning Committee are looking at that. be interesting to see what the decision is. Um, what the, the most important thing, that if that goes through, I'll be looking to secure more than five years worth of um, funding for those beds. We need much longer term um, funding for those okay. beds. And, and your position on, on the application, are you on, in favour? On the application, my public position is I'm in favour of the care home. I'm not in favour of the accommodation on the site. I believe it's overdevelopment of the site. And that's in line with the parish council, I take it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Angela Richardson, thank you very much. Thanks, Martin, for having me.